Hello there, everyone. It is I, DJ Maven, coming at you with another Gunpla review, unscripted. Today, we're taking a look at the Master Grade Gym 2.0. This kit came out in February of 2009, for 3,500 yen. So it's yeah, it's going on over 10 years now. I think for this kit, maybe about 12. I think now. Yeah, that's around well, that's around 30 dollars. So if you can, it's a relatively inexpensive Master Grade here. So let's uh over to the photo mode. Here's the box art. This is what we get with the box here. It shows off some of the kit. More pictures, 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 pictures. You get to see a little bit of uh, the development history lineage of the gym originated with the Gundam came to gym you have your command gym gym sniper gym sniper custom gym sniper custom gym sniper 2 gym cannon command gym and I think the gym SP and the ground ground gym also can't forget about that Okay, so in case it wasn't obvious, this kit is like 80%, 85% the same kit as the Gundam 2.0. Same internal frame, uses some of the same external parts, just in a different color. It's a pretty easy build. Um, if you've ever built any of the Gundam 2.0 kits and you're familiar with the frame, it's a pretty nice uh, internal frame. Has a lot of nice little detail and articulation. It does have those same uh, 2.0 stout hands, which are okay. They're not terrible, but they're not great either. They get the job done. <clears throat> Accessories are pretty basic beam spray gun. Bazooka, pair of beam savers, and a shield, along with a action base connector that goes right into the base. Here are the markings that come with the kit. You get a set of marking stickers with a lot of logos for different gym teams that I'm not fully familiar with. The only one I recognize is the White Dingo, because that was from the Dreamcast game, which I actually played back in the day. You have some dry transfers, dry transfers of a bunch of numbers and stuff, and one little tiny set of foil stickers for only the main cameras on the front and back of the head. You don't have to use them. As you can see on the main A plate here, the visor and those cameras come molded in a pale green color. I chose not to use stickers because I like having the colored plastic whenever possible. Anyway, this runner is uh, unique to the gym. This is your pale blue, along with some custom uh, gray parts and yellow parts for the kit. Uh, this runner is also for the gym. This is most of your new chest parts and this kind of a reddish orange color. And here are some custom internal frame parts for the gym. Mainly the uh, core block, parts for the head, the beam spray gun, and some parts from the for the uh, bazooka. The rest of these runners are mostly from the Gundam 2.0. This is the bazooka and shield parts. Uh, leg parts here in the light blue. You have parts for the rest of the parts for the leg and arms in light blue. And some parts for the internals of the leg. And from here, we're getting into the actual internal frame stuff. This is all ABS plastic. This is all stuff from the Gundam 2.0 frame. Again, it's a pretty nice internal frame. Pretty solid. 
This is where all your fingers are for the hands. Yes, you have to snip all of those out and put them together. I also get a lot of pistons on this kit. Yeah, you get a few polycaps, not, not, not many. And beam savers. Here's some of the, some of the internal frame stuff. Uh, there's little pistons inside the shoulder that will extend out as you move the shoulder out. It's a pretty nice detail. It gets covered up once you put the uh, external parts on. Here's a look at the core block. Pretty nice detail on it. There's a little door on it that opens up to reveal the pilot inside. And this photo here... I took this because I noticed there were some stress marks showing up on the pistons around the uh, legs here. They're not uh, broken on my kit. That's why I took this picture, because I kind of wanted to document that. By the way, some of these pictures I took a long time ago when I first built the kit, so... It took me a moment to look at that picture and try to remember what it was. I uh, remember why I why I took that picture. Here's a completed leg frame. Nice uh, bend at the knee. And here is the full internal frame of the kit. Again, pretty nice looking. If you're into uh, detailing up your internal frames, this is a pretty nice internal frame to work on. If you ever, if you ever build one of these kits. Again, it has a pretty good articulation. The arm bend. The leg kick, pretty high. You can do the splits. And some other posing pictures here. And the beam spray gun has an internal frame, which is something you don't see too often with weapons. Here is the finished kit, the Bog Standard Gym. If the Gundam is like an experimental high-powered sports car like a Porsche, the Gym is most definitely a Beetle. That's how I like to think of it. Mass production, cheap, and four of the regular soldiers. Again, here's that kick. Not quite as high with the uh, skirt armor on, but still pretty good. Here's the crouch pose. There it is with the hatch open and the cockpit open. Here it is the shoulder extension. Pretty good. And here's a look at the joints in the feet and how they can all fold around like that. So you do get your choice of front skirting armor. There's a three-piece set and the standard two-piece. I personally like the look of the two-piece, but this is the three-piece right here. You can use whichever one you want. So here it is with the top half of the gym off, exposing the core block. And here is the gym in its standard configuration. Shield, beam saber, beam spray gun. I always found it a little strange that the beam saber is on the left shoulder. Because that means really only the left arm of the gym can grab the beam saber, not the right arm. Which would make more sense, so... Logically, you would think it would be better to have the beam saber on the right shoulder, so that it can actually grab it. Otherwise, it has to throw the shield away to grab the beam saber, which is, seems kind of silly. This is just my opinion. Some more posing shots. Uh, I discovered this kind of just messing around by accident, but you can stick the beam saber blade into the beam spray gun. It'll just kind of you can just wedge it in there and make it look like it's firing it. Pretty cool. Here is the bazooka. Bazooka is not the easiest uh, weapon to pose with, but you know, I tried. Here it is up on action base. 
Again, the Action Maze connector plugs right into the crotch. Here it is with double beam savers. And there are there is a hard point on the back. It's only one in the middle of the backpack. You can stick the bazooka there if you want. It's a little bit of a awkward place to put it because the connector is kind of right in the middle of the bazooka, so it doesn't really fit on there in a way that looks right. But it works better with the shield back there, so you can do that. And if you do happen to have the Gundam 2.0, uh, the beam rifle is compatible with this because it has the same hand. Alternatively, if you have the ground Gundam, even though that's a much older kit, uh, you can stick the machine gun and the beam rifle from that on here. It will hold those uh, just fine. And here it is with the Gundam Hammer. Or in this case, the Gym Hammer. Here is a beam javelin. And here it is next to the Gundam 2.0 just for comparison. Again, mostly the same kit. Here it is on the back side. And if you're one of those lucky people who actually have a Master Grade G Fighter, yes, you can stick the gym in the G Fighter. It is fully compatible with that because, again, it's mostly the same kit as the Gundam. Here's a, my attempt at the box art pose. I actually got pretty close to it. And here are the accessories. You have a little pilot figure, which is technically Amaro. It's the same, it's the same Amaro figure from the Gun 2.0, but they expect you to paint that yellow like a standard uh, Fetty pilot. All right. So let's uh, switch over to the actual thing here. Yep. Alright. Now, we're live on camera. The Master Grade Gym. So, I already showed up a lot of it here, so I'm not probably not going to go over too many of the same things again, but I'll go over the articulation a little bit here. A little more just to kind of show you how it moves in general. Just some other little details here. There's your close look at the hands here. Now they move around. Individual fingers of all these three pieces right here are all connected together. You could use a knife and split those apart, but I have found in the past that makes the hand a little bit more unstable and unable to hold things very well. But it's up to you if you want to do that. There's a full arm bin right there. Pretty good. Again, as I showed off, shoulder. Uh, actually got a little farther than I did on the uh, photos, but it can tap its own shoulder if you want to If that is your barometer for shoulder articulation The head, I didn't really show up the head articulation in the uh, photos too well, but It's a standard head. It'll go all the way around. There's no issue with that I always forget to mention that the little fins in the uh, the chest can actually be adjusted and moved a little bit, but I usually just leave those alone because once you start messing with them, they get kind of out of whack. And then you gotta try and straighten them out again, which I don't want to spend time doing. I'm not gonna do that. So here's a closer look at that two-piece skirt armor. There is a piece under here that kind of hides behind these, but that's that's the way that works. Again, I, I like this look. I prefer this 2D uh, three-piece. It makes it feel more like a mass production machine to me. Here's a hip, knee bend. I mean, overall, this is still a pretty solid kit. Oh, there's some of the detail underneath the feet there, by the way. I don't see that. Some parts can be uh, taken off. Some easier than others, or the backpack will just comes off. Should be able to get the uh, external covering off. It's just it doesn't like to come off. Yeah. Got it. All 
and of course, you know, beam saber. Bog standard beam sabers with this kit. So, yeah, there's the shield. It's the same shield as the Gundam 2.0, there's really no difference here. Um, Eagle-eyed viewers would note that I have 117 on here and 17 on the gym. I have a very good explanation for that, and uh, I will explain it to you right now. I screwed up. That's the explanation. That, that that's it. So I'm gonna move on. Anyway, here's a hyper bazooka. Again, not not the easiest weapon to pose with. I, I for some reason I thought you could take the ammo clip out of this thing, but you can't. It's just fixed in there. But I'm not gonna mess with that. And as I uh, actually, you know what? this one's a little greater here. As I showed, you can stick the uh, beam saber into the end of the uh, beam spray gun. And just have it like that. Just... If you want to do that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, there's really not much else for me to say about this kit. It's, uh, again, if you built the Gundam 2.0, it's pretty much the same kit. So here's what I have left over with the uh, markings. So you will get some leftover markings with the kit. You can use these for other kits if you want. I always like having a few extras. Just in case I want to use them on something else here. Then here's what's left of my dry transfers right here. So, so, uh, so really, overall, it's a solid kit. You can't really go wrong with it unless you... Unless you're looking for something special and unique in the kit. You know, the gym is just... It's a gym. I mean... What do you expect? It's the most basic of mass production machines. Probably in all of Gundam. <laughs> oh. I guess you can probably... There are, you, do get, you do get some leftover parts with the kit, kit that you don't use. I think these are just... Leftovers from the Gundam 2.0 that were just left on the runner. I don't know if you can do anything with those. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it for a Gym 2.0. It's a solid kit. Um, if you're interested, find one, pick it up. This is one of those really basic, simple kits that is just kind of begs to be customized or beat up and worn or, or something like that. To do something with it to make it look a little more special, but anyway, but I, I don't really need to do that because I like my I like my standard mass production machines to be standard stock, as some people would say. I like it being stock. Anyway, I guess that's going to be up for review. I'm just going to keep repeating myself if I continue on here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and that was the Master Grade Gym 2.0. He's a very happy little, not lucky little dude. I like him. Anyway, take care and hope you enjoy. Bye bye.